Now, Lisa Nandy has come under fire from Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling, saying that the shadow minister is, quote, one of the biggest reasons women on the left don't trust Labour. Well, during Nandy's speech at the Labour Party conference this week, she said the absolute priority will be to empower women and girls if Labour were to win the next general election. But J.K. Rowling quickly hit back, tweeting... Quotes, you said rapists should be transferred to women's prisons if they self-identify as women. You called Women's Place UK a hate group, given that you're one of the biggest reasons that many women on the left no longer trust Labour to defend their rights. Do you stand by those comments? Well, as usual, it was a very divisive hoo-ha. And joining me now is diversity and inclusion facilitator Katie John Went. Thanks for joining us on the show. So you must be having this debate all the time. It's like it's it's become so polarised. This one, um, Lisa Nandy, though, um, says on on the face of it, she wants to stick up for women and girls. But is that position compatible with the idea, for example, of sending people like Isla Bryson, the biological male? rapist into a women's jail. Can you have both of those positions? Um, well, we've already jumped to kind of an extreme example, that, um, Isla Bryson, etc., or Karen White in the past. I do think the, the prison situation is actually easily answerable and the, the government has actually moved towards that in the sense no one with intact male, int male anatomy will be going to a female prison anymore. And certainly no one with a history of sex and violence towards women should be put in that place to actually make women more vulnerable. But can you have that kind of that nuanced discussion where you can stand up for the rights of women and girls, which is what Lisa Nandy says she's standing up for, and J.K. Rowling is staying the same, as do Women's Place UK, as does the, the Philia conference that's on today in Glasgow at the moment. Um, you can stand up for women and girls and still stand up for human rights and stand up for transgender people. Mm. The question is, how do you create a dialogue around, how do we coexist where any of those rights and situations, where does sex and gender kind of intersect in such a way that we have to discuss how we coexist? Yeah. And, you know, so that's the question for me. I guess the, the problem is there seems to be a hierarchy and, and oftentimes people believe that trans rights now supersede women's rights, particularly in terms of safety around prisons and, and and another big um, sticking point, of course, is, is sport. You know, biological men clearly, which I hope you would agree, have, have an advantage um, in terms of their skeleton, their muscle structure, if they've been through male puberty. Do you think things like that are what are, what are make, making people think, you know, I've got no problem with, with you being a transgender person, but when you come in and so unfairly beat biological women, it's simply unfair. Yeah, well, in, in terms of sport, I don't think I particularly have an unfair advantage. I'm a bit of a scrawny ex-bloke. Um, but um, And I've had discussions with Sharon Davies on this channel um, yeah. and with Martina Navratilova on Twitter, and I've changed my position on that. I have listened okay. to people on both sides, and people have come back at me since I moved my position that trans people should not be in sex-based sport, They're, that they do have an advantage. Um, I was speaking to someone in a, in a football team recently. She said that, you know, on, and she was pro trans in sport and she was on a team of women footballers but then suddenly they faced a team that was almost entirely made up of transgender players and suddenly she said okay this changes it mm. so when it's one person in a team minor advantage when it's an individual in, a, in a, an elite sport big advantage mm. and also the person who's like 400th in a male category suddenly becomes top three in a women's category those advantages can't disappear someone who has on average five inches you know taller height mm. um you know six to eight inches longer breadth bigger hands on average is going to be bigger in the goal mouth is going to be have a you know longer stroke in the pool or a bigger stride when hurdling mm. so but they're not really hugely safety issues, but they are fairness issues. And I think they're quite easy to discuss and say, you know what, that we've got on the wrong side of that. But then there are these other nuances, like how does a party, a political party, say they are pro a minority group, whether that's women with regard to sex, they're not necessarily a minority group, but a disadvantaged group in the past, or transgender, just 1% to 2% of the population. How do they stand up for both of those rather than pitch one against the other? And I think it is possible, and you, you said... Has, does it, has it now become that we put trans over women? I don't think we should be doing that. It's trans and women, and it's working out how do we coexist, where do we intersect, and how do we have that conversation without simply saying it's you or me? Great. OK, Katie, John, we'll, we'll leave it there. Superb, nuanced debate. That's where we like it on GB News. Thank you very much. That was superb.